The Samsung Ative Odyssey is the newest smartphone for Verizon Wireless, and it's also the first Samsung-built Windows Phone 8 device for the United States. But it's not the first Ative-branded device. That honor belongs to the Ative S, which we reviewed last month. So let's see how they stack up. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Samsung Ative Odyssey versus Samsung Ative S. Okay, so in this quick look, we're going to compare these devices in four areas. Build, specs, camera, and general performance. We'll have a full review on this device shortly, so make sure to subscribe and follow us at the links in the description so you don't miss it. It will be epic, or at least as epic as a mid-range device review can be. That's right. Despite its lofty name, the Odyssey is a mid-tier device, and you can tell that just by looking at it. Not that it looks cheap, but it's obviously not striving to be the thinnest or prettiest of the bunch. At 11.1 millimeters, it's pretty chunky next to the Ative S's 8.7 millimeters, but it's also 10 grams lighter at 125 grams. At the same time, it's got a much smaller footprint than the Ative S, a much more rounded shape, and a much less outspoken aesthetic design with its more understated back cover. All this combines to make the Ative Odyssey feel a little more toy-like than its premium sibling, which isn't a surprise considering its $50 price on contract. The smaller size will appeal to those tired of jumbo phones, though, and that reduced footprint is thanks to a smaller 4-inch display, which brings us into specs. The Super AMOLED display in the Odyssey is nothing to get excited about resolution-wise, with its 480 x 800 display at 233 ppi, and especially sitting next to the Ative S's big, beautiful 4.8-inch 720p Super AMOLED at 306 ppi. The Odyssey's colors pop, and the blacks are deep, as you might expect, but the pixels are painfully visible, to our eyes even more so than on other mid-range devices. Color is also way off, with crimson appearing much more magenta on the Odyssey. In all, the display is pretty disappointing next to the Ative S. But this being a Windows phone, some differences are only skin deep. The processor driving the Odyssey is the same 1.5 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Plus as in the Ative S, backed up by the same gig of RAM. Performance benchmarks were similar using the benchmarking utility WP Bench, with the Odyssey scoring an average of 240 to the Ative S's 237. In addition, each device offers micro SD expansion up to 64 gigs and a removable battery, though the onboard memory on the Odyssey is 8 gigs to the Ative S's 16, and the battery capacity is 2100 milliamp hours to the Ative S's 2300. We'll have full battery performance figures on our full review. Also taking a step down in specs is the Odyssey's camera, which comes in at 5 megapixels to the Ative S's 8 megapixels. The photos look worse on the Odyssey's inferior display, but once you get them off the phone, it's remarkable how similar they are to the Ative S's results. The reduced resolution is apparent, but the color balance and saturation and temperature are very close. And at first glance, these results look quite nice. For stills, the Odyssey seems to offer one of the better mid-range phone cameras we've played with, especially if you don't need the marginal resolution improvements that the Ative S's larger sensor provides. Video is okay as well, see our dedicated sample video for that, but neither of these devices is going to win any prizes for audio recording. Finally, if you're not familiar with Windows Phone, you might not be aware that performance between different devices running the platform tends to be very close, if not identical, regardless of hardware. And that holds true here, with a very fluid UI experience in the home screen, in the app list, and in the multitasking screen, which should be empty because we will just do a quick app launch comparison on each device. We should be very close to identical after a fresh boot here. One, two, three on messaging. Messaging launch identical. One, two, three on email. Once again, same result. And in the browser, we're on the same Wi-Fi hotspot, so we're not comparing speed here. We are just comparing rendering speed and ability. And as you can see, the page has some gaps in it as we scroll while the page is still loading. Once the loading process completes, that smooths up just a little bit. Let's do double tap to zoom in on a column. There that goes. Once again, Odyssey on the left, S on the right. Double tap to zoom out, double tap to zoom in. And we'll do just a little pinch test. Very, very similar as far as re-rendering. 
things get less pixelated and I've accidentally tapped on a link. Difficult to run two phones at the same time, even for Captain Two Phones. And to close out our app launch comparison, we'll just hop into two third-party apps, for starting with Rowey, a Twitter app. Loading the timeline, there we go. The Odyssey beating the ATVS by a few seconds there. It might be a result of data, but nothing that's going to ruin your productivity workflow all day. And the popular third-party note-taking app, Evernote, Loading for the first time, and there it is. Finally, let's belabor the point with a somewhat taxing flight simulator, Rise of Glory. You can see that with the same CPU and RAM under the hood, the Odyssey delivers very, very nice performance. In fact, it is identical performance to every other Windows Phone device, and my performance is identical as well. The Ativa Odyssey and the Ativa S are very different products for very different kinds of customers. In some ways, like the build, the display, and the camera resolution, that disparity is very apparent. In others, like the processor, storage options, performance, and camera quality, there's really not much difference at all. If you're looking for a Samsung Windows Phone 8 device right now, your buying decision might ultimately come down to which device is available where you live the Ativ Odyssey if you're in the United States and in a Verizon wireless coverage area, and the Ativ S everywhere else, at least for now. Everyone, we're going to have a lot more coverage on the Ativ Odyssey, including a full review coming very soon. Stay tuned to Pocket Now for that. Follow us in the links at the description. Throw us a thumbs up if you like the video, and thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.